All right. Welcome, welcome to Startup Grind. Uh, I'm excited to, to be uh, hosting one of our very own uh, Startup Grind chapter directors here today. Uh, thank you, thank you, Malcolm, for joining us. It's my Boston pleasure of to be here. Thank you. Today, Startup Grind is the world's largest community of startups, founders, innovators, and creators. And you know how the popular saying goes, um, that if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you really want to go far, you go together. We believe in making friends, not just contacts. We believe in giving first, not taking. Uh, we believe in helping others before helping yourself. Our mission at Startup Grind is to give startups everywhere the education opportunities they need to build, grow, and scale their companies. So basically, we strive to help founders, entrepreneurs, and startups succeed regardless of their geographic location or socioeconomic circumstances. And how do we do that? We host a lot of events. But more than that, Startup Grind is a community where we bring like-minded yet diverse individuals together to connect, to learn, to help, to build, and to belong. We do this daily through uh, local events, um, conferences, startup memberships, partner memberships, students and investor programs, and our online media and content. And collectively, we reach over 3.5 million individuals worldwide. I'm excited today about the business model, account, um, generating the business model workshop with Mayoko Adeoti, who is um, phenomenal in his own field. Uh, Mayoko Adeoti is the CEO of Standard Business Operating Systems, an IT company that provides services to organizations to increase their sales, their profits, and their social impact through the web, mobile app development, and digital marketing across diverse sectors like education, entertainment, health, engineering, real estate, oil and gas, religion, and so forth and so on. He is also the director of Startup Grind Jaws. Uh, he also leads um, the Django Girls Abuja. In fact, he's the lead organizer of Django Girls Abuja, a member of the Python Software Foundation and Django Software Foundation. Uh, Mayoko is uh, currently the regional coordinator of the Young African Leaders Initiative, YALI, alumni chapter of Nigeria, North Central Region. Uh, for over eight years, he has organized technology and entrepreneurship events, fireside chats, uh, panel discussions, hackathons, workshops, and boot camps. Um, recently, he was appointed as the director of Founder Institute, uh, which is one of the world's largest proceed um, startup accelerators. His passion for providing avenues for education and business development has led to the launch of two new companies, uh, which is Boot Campus International and Standard Innovation Lab. Uh, I'm excited to have him here with me today on this um, workshop. Uh, Mayoko, thank you very, very much for joining us. Thank you so much to have you. Wow, thank you so much for uh, taking the time, time to uh, read my brief profile. And then, of course, for inviting me. It's really my pleasure to be here today. Uh, just like you said, it, it has been my pleasure providing awareness for education and making impact. So when you invited me to come and share uh, some knowledge today, I, I found that as a very, very good opportunity to do the thing that I love. So uh, once again, thank you for inviting me over today. Thank you so much for joining us today. All right, so um, in this event today, um, we're having two sessions. Um, the first session is the workshop, and the other session is the networking session where we we'll get to interact with each other. Like I said previously, we're a community. We we'll get to meet each other, help each other grow. Uh, this um, in this session is where you have you need a team on your you need a team member on your on your team. You are looking to join a team, or you have um, mm -hmm. business concerns that you want to share with mentors. This is the session where you where you get to meet mentors and get to share that and get to network with pairs and all of those. So today now we'll be discussing the uh, the uh, the generating a business model really so my open please share with us a little bit in your 80 years of working with entrepreneurs what how important is the business model and how do you find um the business model significant for for the business before going to the workshop thank you all right that's a very very good question uh a business model can be said to be like having a business plan 
you know, which is a very, very important document if you want to start a business. However, this is not a business plan, but you can just call it a plan. Whereas a business plan normally has lots and lots of pages, you know, analysis and all that, a business model uh, is actually something that, you know, uh, the, a business model canvas, which we are going to be talking about today, is just a single page document. And it's very, very important, really, really important. In fact, all these successful startups in the world, if you want to be successful as a startup, you need to have uh, a business model canvas because of its unique importance. It, it uh, allows for flexibility. It allows for and it also allows for transparency. And of course, it also allows you to get on the on the job of building your business model very very fast. And so, uh, a business model canvas is really important in the sense that it cuts away all the clutters of a business plan and summarizes everything you need to do as a business uh, in order to add value, in order to capture value, in order to create value for uh, your customers. Wow, thank you so much, Mario Kuhn. So uh, thank you for, for joining us, uh, participants from all over the world. So if you are thinking about ways to create value or build new businesses, I think you are in the right place right now, OK? And I'll leave Mario Kuhn to it as he walks us through um, the business model canvas. Okay, so thank you so much, Mario. Cole. You can you can take it up. All right. Once again, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, in the next couple of minutes, uh, I'm going to be sharing with us uh, what it takes to generate a business model using uh, an instrument, using a tool popularly called the business model canvas. Uh, so what? Building a startup actually requires you to use a lot of tools, okay? You need lots and lots of tools to be a successful startup. And a business model uh, canvas is just one of them. And that is what we are going to be focusing on today. Uh, so, uh, Daniel, can I share my screen? Yes, please go ahead and share your screen. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, once again, welcome to today's workshop titled Generating a Business Model. Uh, my name is Director of Startup Grand Just, uh, CEO of Standard Business Operating Systems, and uh, co founder Code Campus International. As a matter of fact, I do, I do lots and lots of things, as I've just been read out by uh, Daniel. Uh, my fellow director in the city of Asaba, who himself is doing a great thing uh, over there. Uh, it's, doing, it, it's, it's doing amazing things, and I'm so proud of what it's doing. So today, I'm going to be walking us through what it takes to generate a business model using a tool called the Business Model Canvas. Uh, let me start with this saying that says that the best way to learn entrepreneurship is to do it and reflect on that experience. So entrepreneurship basically is some is an action word. Okay, so whatever we are going to be learning here today uh, goes beyond uh, theory. We are not here to actually do theory. We are here to do uh, practicals. As a matter of fact, if we were to be doing this live, uh, you would be filling a business template. Okay, you actually be filling a business uh, model canvas right there in the room. And so I just want to employ us that after tonight's session, you fill up a business, a business model canvas. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing with us a template with us that we can work with. The last time I had this kind of uh, session, it was in person and every participant actually took the time to develop a business model right there uh, during the session okay so please take note that whatever we are going to be sharing here today is not uh, just theory it is practical you need to really really take action on uh, the information here in this few minutes uh, so 
you call yourself an entrepreneur or you want to be an entrepreneur, the first thing you need to do is to answer some questions. Okay. So what are those, uh, what, what are you bringing to the table? Okay. As, as a person, that is what a business model canvas will help you to do. So first and foremost, you need to sit down and answer the following questions. Does your business solve a problem? Okay. That idea you have, does it solve a problem? If it does, which one? You need to identify that. Okay. Now, secondly, you also need to answer, can you execute this idea better than your competition? There is a large likelihood that whatever you want to do is... There's, there's a saying that there's nothing new under the sun. So, of course, there's that possibility that someone is already doing that which you have in mind as a business idea. Can you execute it better than your competition? Okay. What is that unique thing that you are bringing on board that is not already out there? You need to sit down and answer this question. And that is what uh, we are going to be looking through today uh, with this model canvas. Thirdly, you need to ask yourself the question, is your idea easy to understand? Okay? When you explain your idea to a little girl or a little boy, do they get what you are talking about? Or you explain it to your grandma uh, in the village? Is she going to, you know, understand what you are talking about? Okay? So you need to put yourself uh, in the place of, of the customer. Okay? Ask yourself your question. Ask, ask yourself that if someone is to sell this product or this service to you, would you be willing to patronize? Will you be willing to buy? Will you are, are you seeing value in what you want to take to the marketplace? You need to answer these questions. And then, of course, uh, you need have to keep reviewing your ideas, especially when you cannot get uh, positive feedback. You know, based on the uh, following questions you just asked, you need to review your ideas and keep fine tuning and refining your ideas. Okay, so you want to launch a startup, right? First and foremost, let's define what a startup is. Uh, I always tell people that a startup is different from a traditional business. Yeah, because uh, traditional business, you just go and just start something. You you just want to survive, or you just you are, you are just hoping that what you are doing is going to grow and it's going to uh, it's going to succeed. But a startup is an experiment. Okay, you have to always bear it in mind that a startup, first and foremost, is an experiment. You are like you know experimenting on your idea on 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 a set of propositions that you are taking to the marketplace to see whether that's uh, this idea is going to fly or not. And so it's usually a young company that is founded by a league of one or more to create and develop a unique product or service and bring it to the market. Okay, so uh, a startup founder can be solo and you can also have co-founders. But the most important thing is that you are coming up with something unique and bringing it to the marketplace. Now, one of the distinguishing factors of a startup is the fact that it majorly uses technology to solve a problem. Okay, so uh, I, I would like to use the example of someone who sells Akara. You know, Akara uh, is, is the bean cake that, you know, English, they call it bean cake. Someone who, two people can start an Akara business today. Why, why one person integrates technology, okay? Probably builds a website or builds a mobile app or starts using a social media to, to, to reach customers and to take orders, you know, and, and to make supplies. That person who is using technology, who has integrated technology into solving a problem, can be said to have launched a startup. Meanwhile, the other person who is just doing it traditionally without integrating technology is just has just launched a regular traditional business. Okay, so let's take note that startups use technology to solve a problem and usually of course and then they also have the intention of growing very fast that business is just trying to you know survive and just you know keep the business running but startups always have the intention like men i want this thing to grow very very fast i want to increase my valuation in the next two three years four years five years ten years from now i want this business to be worth hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. Okay, so that's how startup founders think. Okay, and then the fast growth, of course, is not only in terms of uh, money, 
they can also be in terms of user base because user base ultimately leads to revenue now uh there are a couple of startup tools there is a couple of things that you use when you want to launch a startup a business plan very important document very very important document is uh one of the startup tools a business model canvas which we are going to be focusing on today uh that's the core of our workshop today business model canvas a pitch deck an elevator pitch and then a minimal viable product for new startups i'm going to run through a definition of uh these startup tools and then we'll now focus on uh the business model canvas which is also called bmc for sure okay so what is a business plan uh a business plan is a formal written document containing business goals okay so it's a written document you actually sit down to to write it to different sections of how you are going to go to the market how you are going to generate money how you are going to keep record your your financial uh, analysis you know your, your 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 forecast for into the years you put everything down in a business plan okay the methods of how your goals can be attained and the time frame within which these goals need to be achieved you need to put it down uh in writing that is what a business plan is a business model canvas on the other hand is a template that summarizes the nine key components of a business model in a single diagram okay so why a business plan has several pages or uh, in a document a business model canvas is just one page okay which means you can visualize it all at once you can see everything about your business on a single document in just one document you have a complete understanding of business now uh, a pitch deck also one of the tools that every startup founder needs is a is a brief presentation often created using powerpoint and it is used to provide your audience with a quick overview of your business plan you will usually use your pitch deck during face-to-face -face or online meetings with potential investors, customers, partners, and co-founders. So we all know uh, what a PowerPoint is. It's, that's what I'm actually using to make this presentation today. So a pitch deck is just like what I am using here now. You need to put information about your business in a deck, in a presentation format. For the purpose of meeting potential investors and customers so it's a selling tool it's a tool that you use to sell yourself okay so you want to you want to raise funds you want to get some customers or co-founders you need a pitch deck because you can't be going about showing people your business plan or showing people your uh your business model canvas you know the the the, the original thing the first thing that you present to outsiders to people outside of your business in order to buy them over is called a pitch deck so you must take time to sit down and design a beautiful pitch deck for the outside world and then uh, an elevator pitch is a short description of an idea product or company that explains the concept in a way such that any listener can understand it in a short period of time okay so this is talking about your an oral presentation what you say okay you must have an elevator pitch you must have something that when you meet your potential investors or your potential partners or your potential co-founders you must be able to convince them you must be able to sell within a short period of time so you may just have one minute to sell your idea and so you must be really you must be prepared it mustn't be something that you will just be beating about the bush okay so most times you are expected in fact not most times you are actually expected to have a pre-planned and well rehearsed oral presentation and that is called an elevator pitch you must have it you must have that uh, oral presentation even in different formats you can have a one minute presentation you can have a three minute presentation you can have a five minute pre presentation depending on the audience depending on the time depending on the place and then you use this uh pitch to sell your company to sell your idea to sell your business to potential investors potential customers uh potential partners co-founders etc etc and then finally uh let's also look at what a minimum viable product is and a, a minimum viable product or mvp is a is a version of a product 
with just enough features to satisfy early customers and provide feedback for future development. What does this say? When you are going into the market, you don't need to put everything that is in your head into the product all at once. Okay? You just need to launch with the minimum feature which can enable people to begin to use your product, which can enable people to come on board and experience what you are trying to offer. And then, of course, you also get feedback. It is from this feedback that you will now do what? You keep improving on your product. You keep adding more and more features over time. So an MVP is actually the way to enter uh, the market. Now we have looked at uh, the different startup tools that every startup entrepreneur actually needs to go into uh, the market. We will now focus on one of them, and that is the business model canvas. So uh, let's quickly, 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 once again, uh, define what a, bus a business model is before we now move on to business model canvas. Now, a business model is how a business creates value for itself while delivering products and services for its customers. Okay, so while you are starting a business, you want to create value for yourself. Okay, you want to capture value for yourself and also for your customers. Because while you are getting value, that means you are also giving value in return. Okay, so how do you get value by delivering value, by delivering products and services? That is what a business model is. Okay, what is that thing that will enable you to exchange value in the marketplace? That is what a business model is. Nobody will just come and just give you value without getting value in return in the marketplace. Okay, so we are talking business now. The great hey, I don't think this way. This one is Hello? No, don't yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. You bring something to the marketplace and you get something in return. That is the value. Okay? And a business model is how you actually get that done. So examples of uh, business models, uh, we have some, some startups like, okay, for instance, Facebook is a business that captures value by connecting people. Okay? So you go on the online, you create an account. From there, you can begin to share uh, interesting things about your life, you know, and to, to your to your connections, to your friends, and also see interesting things from them too. And by so doing, Facebook, the largest social media network in the world today, is generating value for itself while delivering a service to its customers. Uber, for instance, has found a way to connect uh, drivers to people who wants, who wants to take rides, okay? So you get to, uh, as someone who wants to take a ride, you can call uh, a driver and they will take you to your, to your location. Or you have a car, you want to you know, drive people around and get paid for it. Uber has actually found a way to deliver this service to the customers. And by so doing, Uber is also making money, okay? so. Everyone in the value chain is exchanging value. Every startup and every business idea has different business models. And as someone who wants to launch a startup, you actually need to sit down and reason it out. Okay? So it's something you sit down and reason and meditate and think and brainstorm yourself and your team on how you want to go to the marketplace what business model do you want to use to create value to to deliver value and to capture value and here now comes the business model canvas once again the business model canvas is a template that summarizes the nine key components of a business model in a single diagram i want us to take note of the word template and I also want us to take note of the word canvas. Now, what is a canvas? Conventionally, a canvas is, uh, is, 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 is somewhere where you paint. You know, when, when you draw, for those who are into arts, you know, you paint on a canvas. 
Okay, so that is where the the word business model canvas was brought from. Okay, and what do you do after making a painting? You don't go and keep it somewhere. You don't go and hide it where it is not going to be uh where, where it's not going to express itself you hang it where you can appreciate it and see it every day the same thing with your business model canvas it is not a document that you uh that you come up with and then go and keep in your locker or your drawer it's something that you're actually supposed to hang somewhere so that you can see it regularly so that your team can see it regularly you're supposed to be looking at it as if it's a picture okay so that all those things you have reasoned out and put on the canvas is is always fresh on your mind because it's very very easy to forget things that even you yourself thought and wrote down especially if you uh, for instance in a business plan you can just put that bulky document in a drawer you know and forget certain elements but because a business model canvas is a summary it's a summarized version of what you want to do you actually need to put it in a place where it is always visible for you to see on a regular basis. So that's why a business model canvas is a template and it's a one page document that summarizes nine key components of a business model. And we are going to be looking at these nine key components in this workshop. Now let's move on. This is an example of what a business model canvas looks like. I hope we can all see my screen. Okay, so this is uh, this is the template. This is what it looks like. You can see that. You can see a screen. Okay, great. Thanks for the feedback. So you can see that a business model canvas actually has nine sections. Okay, so these are the nine. Screen again. We lost it. Yes. Let me stop sharing and start sharing again. Can you see my screen now? Yes, you can see it now again. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this is what a business model canvas looks like. Okay, this is just it. This is, this is what it looks like. This is what anyone who talks about business model canvas, this is what they're talking about, okay? We have other canvases. For instance, we have the link canvas, okay? We have the growth hacking canvas, okay? Those ones actually does uh, different, they are, they are used for different roles. Though the link canvas and the business model canvas, they are similar in nature, okay? The link canvas is just uh, like a, a more summarized version of the business model canvas but then what we, our focus for today is the business model canvas and as you can see there are nine key uh, components value proposition customer relationship customer segment channels revenue stream cost structure uh key resources key activities key partners you need to sit down and fill up all these components very 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 important very very essential okay so i'll quickly run us through uh what these different components of a business model canvas really, really stand for, okay? But before that, let's look at the notable advantages of using a business model canvas. And these are the three notable advantages. Focus, flexibility, and transparency, okay? Like I said, your business model canvas should always be visible, should always be handy, should be something that you see daily. So it keeps you focused on your goals. It keeps you focused on your business model. It keeps you focused on how you want to capture value by bringing value to the marketplace. Now let's go to flexibility. How does it make you flexible? A business model canvas is not uh the content of a business model canvas is not actually etched in stone okay it's, it's not fixed and that's the beauty of it you can actually modify from time to time so it's th there is that possibility that okay maybe something is not working in, in in your canvas you can actually clean it up and put something else there okay so it makes you flexible 
And then transparency, <clears throat> the third notable advantage. It helps everyone on your team, everyone on your company to see what you are up to. Okay? Because everybody is going to be on the same page. And it makes it easy for people to buy into your vision. So it makes your business idea and your you know your value proposition, whatever everything you are going to, to do, everything you are going to be doing is going to be transparent to your company. Okay, so everybody will be on the same page. These are the three notable advantages of using a business model canvas. <clears throat> Now, once again, uh, let's quickly run through the, the nine essential parts, the key components of a business model canvas. We have the value proposition, we have the customer segments, we have the channels, we have the customer relationships, we have the key resources, we have the key partners, we have the key activities, we have the cost structure, and we have the revenue stream. You have to take your time to reason these things out, okay? So let me use the word reason, as in think. You need to think them out. You need to brainstorm. You and your team, you need to come up with, okay, what do we, you know, how do we really want to go to the marketplace? Because out there, it's it's not a bed of roses. It's not easy, you know, to really go out there and make an impact in the world. It's, it's tough out there. So you need to really sit down and do a lot of planning okay so that at the end of the day you can raise your head up high and say yes in the marketplace you are making an impact now let's uh, run through what uh this different segment stands for i'll be flashing this from time to time okay so that we would still keep it within view that we are working with the template <clears throat> now so uh Different people can actually start filling their business model canvas from different sections, okay? Uh, but I would like to start from the value proposition. So uh, what's value proposition? This is the, the idea. What are you bringing into the marketplace? What value are you bringing to the marketplace? It has to be clearly defined. Okay, so you need to explain the product benefits. You need to explain how the offering solves the customer's problems. Okay, and you need to differentiate the offering from the competition. Okay, so you need to be clear on the problems you are solving. That is the value proposition. What are you bringing to the marketplace? I, for one, I just launched a coding bootcamp in Abuja, okay? I'm bringing education. I'm bringing technical education, in-demand uh, software engineering skills to the marketplace because that is what I love to do, okay? So I took my time to study the coding bootcamp industry and then I, 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 I came up with my business model and now I have launched and Okay, and, and I'm beginning to uh, get customers. Okay, so you must define your own. You must identify a gap in the marketplace and say, okay, I want to bring this. Even if it exists before, okay, you, are, you come up with uh, something that is different because, of course, we already mentioned competition. There are competition in the marketplace. You are not the only person that has that idea. Even what you want to do is already being done by somebody else. So you need to come up with something, you know, that is quite different, that, that will give you a share in the market, okay? So you need to sit down and reason it out and put this thing on your template. Then you need to define the customer segments, okay? Who are your customers, okay? What is their problem? You have to take your time, you know? Sometimes you... you you, you don't, sometimes you don't really need to sit down and answer all the questions on your own. There is the room for survey, okay? So you need to go out there and do some surveys. It's very, very important. You need to take time to understand the customer needs because we have already, uh, there are times that people will come up with solutions that, that 
you know, to, if they are the only ones seeing that solution, they come up with a solution and then they start going about looking for a problem for it. There's not, there, there's actually no problem there in the marketplace that they are trying to solve, but they just have this idea that ah, they can do this, they can do that, and then maybe they build a product, and then at the end of the day, nobody is patronizing. Why? Because you are not building for the customer, you are building for yourself. So you must, you know, you must create what is called customer personas. You must understand the customer. You must you must know who they are. Are they are they children? Are they are they adolescents? Are they adults? Are they working class professionals? Are they entrepreneurs? Are they are they government workers? All manner of people. You need to understand who your customer is. You need to understand what their problem is. How are they solving that problem right now? Okay, so these are things that need to go into that section of the business model canvas. And when you do that, every day you are seeing it, you know your customer is, you know what problems they have and how you are working to solve those problems. You need to list the top segments that would allow you to make the most impact because there are different customer segments, okay? Different, different customers, there's customer A, customer B, all of them, you know, you, you, you segment them. And then you now decide on the one that you know that, okay, when you focus on this person, on this group, or on this segment of people, you will make the most impact, okay? You put it down in your BMC. Another uh, section of the business model canvas are the channels, okay? You need to understand the channels through which you'll be communicating with your customer. Okay, so how do you communicate with your customer? We have uh, e-channels, we have physical channels, okay? All these things, you have to be clear about them. Do you want to use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, SMS, email? All these things, you have to write them down. Put them, let it, let it be clear to you, okay? And apart from communication, how do you deliver the value proposition? Okay, so you have to understand the channel of communication and then the channel through which you will deliver what you are promising the customer. Are you going to be delivering your product digitally online? Or you are going to have a store where people will come and pick up the product? Or you are going to uh, uh, take it to them in their, in their homes? Whether it's a product or service, you need to be clear about what you want to do. Okay, so how do you get your product or service to your customer? You need to answer that. Okay, how do you reach your customers? Which channels work best? How much do they cost? Okay, these are things you have to settle down and put in your business model canvas if you want to run a successful startup. Now, another thing you also must uh, really, really think about and put into writing is customer relationships. How do you maintain customer relationships? Okay. What relationship do your target customer expect you to establish? And how do you integrate this into your business? Are you running a, do you want to run a kind of business that it is just one of uh, interaction with the customer? Or do you want the customer to keep being in your business over and over again? So we have what we call the customer life cycle. Do you want your, your, your customer to keep paying you and keep coming back to you? Of course, everybody will want customers that keep paying, okay, that keep coming back to you. So how do you develop that relationship with a customer, okay? You need to find that time to actually plan this thing because these things don't happen by chance, okay? These things actually don't happen by chance. When you see successful startups, you know, who have been there, who have stood the test of time. It is because they have paid attention to customer relationships. They pay attention to how they maintain these relationships. Okay? And then this also brings us back to channels that we just finished. How do you communicate? Okay? With your customers. You can be doing it via regular emailing. Emailing, I, uh, I believe, is actually the cheapest way to, to reach your customer today. Very cheap and fast and also personalized, okay? So put all these things into consideration, put it in your 
uh, business model canvas and make sure that you implement your ideas. Now, this is a, uh, a the business model canvas template once again. I want us to notice something uh, from what we are seeing. You will notice that we have just finished uh, value proposition, customer segments, customer relationships, and channels. This, you can see from what I'm displaying on the screen, is on the right hand side of the BMC. So this, these are like the first four sections, which you know you need to fill. They are on the right hand side. Now we'll be moving to the sections on the left hand side, which is key partners, key activities, and key resources. So I was just saying that we just finished four segments, four sections, okay? Four components. If, if you look to the right hand side, the top right hand of the business model canvas, you'll see value proposition, customer relationship, customer segment channels. Those are like the first four uh, that we have just dealt with. We will now move on to the three on the right that is painted uh, pink, key partners, key resources, key activities. And then finally, we will go to the bottom two, cost structure and cost revenue. That is how the uh, template is designed. Now let's talk about key resources, okay? You have to identify the key resources that you are going to need to deliver your value proposition, okay? So uh, you, you, there is no business that you want to do in the world today where you will not need resources, okay? So resources can be in terms of human resources. You first and foremost need people on board, okay? So you, your co-founders, your employees, you need to you need to identify them you need to know you know how to get in touch with them you need to know how to bring them on board in order to come and join you a business owner a startup founder in implementing your business model okay so key resources include the people the knowledge the means and the money that you need to run your business you need to identify them you need to identify all of these and put them into consideration. Remember, once again, it is not only about thinking these things. You have to write them down on the template, and you have to put them where you can be seeing it regularly, like a vision board. And not only that, you have to implement. Now we are on to key partners. Uh, there's a saying in Africa that a tree cannot make a forest. Okay, And if you really want to go far, you have to go with others. So it's very, very important that you identify key partners. You cannot do it alone. In as much as you would be uh, using other people's tools, okay? That can also be said to be a partnership, okay? So you can actually have partners that, that you are signed up with formally and those that you are not signed up with formally, okay? In as much as you cannot do everything on your own, you have to you have to onboard other people, other organizations, other institutions. Then you have to identify who they are. And so you need to ask yourself, what external support do you need in order to succeed? You need to bring the support on board. What are the motivations for the partnerships? Okay. What will make people want to partner and work with you? Okay. So you need to list the partners that you can't do business without. For instance, I mentioned my uh, startup, Code Campus International. Currently, we are planning international learning sessions, okay, whereby we'll be having programs, <laughs> not even in Nigeria, but other countries across the world. And how are we going to uh, bring that into reality? We are going to be working with partners in different countries because we, we are a local business, but we want to grow. So before we can say we want to, <clears throat> Excuse me. Before we we'll, we'll just uh, grow very fast, the way we are dreaming, we need to we need to work with other people. We need to we need to identify other people that we can work with, other organizations that are doing things that are similar to what we are doing, and then we we'll do what through them we work together. We we'll take our idea to the marketplace, and it's a win-win situation for everybody. Okay, so whether you are launching a fintech product, 
or you are launching an, a health tech product or an agri tech product, it is very, very important for you to sit down, identify people that you can work with. Okay, they are not necessarily a part of your organization, that's why they are called partners. Okay, they are external people, they are external support, but then you guys establish a mutual relationship and then you uh you, you get to work together and before you know it everybody is uh creating value giving value and capturing value then uh you'd also need to know the key activities you'll be doing on a daily basis what do you need to do every day to run your organization so business is not uh it's not a stroll in the park okay it's actually serious work especially startup entrepreneurship it's not easy <laughs> It's not easy, man. You need to ask guys that are that are success that are successful out there in the marketplace. You need to you, you need to hear the story of people like uh, Elon Musk. Hear the story of people like Mark Zuckerberg. Hear the story of people like Jeff Bezos. Even here in our own contemporary uh, Africa and Nigeria, where you hear the story of people uh, like Shola uh, of Paystack you know, and so on and so forth. You know that these guys actually keep a lot of sleepless nights. Okay, anyone who is up there successful in the startup world, they do lots and lots and lots of work on their business on a daily basis. You need to identify the crucial things. You need to identify the crucial things that your business needs to do in order to deliver on its propositions and make the business work and not only identify them, you need to do them on a daily basis, on a regular basis, you and your team. Uh, so now we have talked about key partners, key activities, and key resources. We will now move on to the final two, which is cost structure and revenue streams. Now, in running a business, we already talked about resources you need resources isn't it and that means you must spend okay you must also spend list your top costs by looking at activities and resources what are those things that you have to spend money on okay what are the most important costs for operating your business you need to do what you need to identify that okay you need to know which key resources and activities are most expensive so that you will know how to manage money I was saying that something as little as paying for a domain name, okay, or a hosting space is a cost to your business. Or you want to place an ad on Facebook or on Google, it's a cost to your business, okay? And then uh, if, if you don't want to work from home, you want to go and rent an office space, it's a cost to your business. Even if you are working from you need to pay for light. You need to pay for internet. It's a cost to your business. You need to sit down and identify all these costs. The people that are going to be working on your team, how do you motivate them? You need to give them something. You need to give them some money. Or you need to give them some equity. It's a cost to your business. All these things will not just happen all by themselves, by chance. It is your duty and your responsibility as a startup founder to put all these things into perspective. I hope you didn't lose my screen again. We lost your screen again, really. Ah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me do something. Let me refresh the screen. The screen okay. where I'm sharing from. All right. Let me refresh that screen. Well, it's interesting the things you are, you are sharing and it's very, very insightful. And again, um, what, what comes to my mind at this moment is the um, having the the uh, or taking out the time really to even work on your business model even gives you a clearer perspective of what your business is about you know helping you see how your cost is um, um distributed what key activities you need to do you know and the various partners you need and to even know how to go ahead and forge uh, and maintain the relationship with them you know for the things you're sharing and it's insightful and educative too thank you Mayoko, for sharing with us and for taking out the time to, to really do this with thank us you. yes thank you very much uh we are gradually coming to the end of the presentation 
I hope my screen is visible. Visible now, thank you. Okay, so I just uh, finished talking about this slide actually, talking about the fact that you need to, sh you need to make some expenditure, okay? So there will be costs to your business and you need to identify these costs, okay? You need to put it down and you need to keep updating the, uh, the cost. You need to keep updating the template. Remember, just like we said, one of the advantages of a business model canvas is that it is flexible. Okay, so as your costs begin to grow, uh, you also do what? You also update the canvas. Okay, of course, in, in, in business, we, we know that we have what we call the fixed cost. We have the variable cost. So there are different type of costs. There are costs that will just remain the same uh, for, for, for as long as possible. There are costs that will keep changing. Okay, so as these things keep changing, you also need to identify them and you need to put them into your business model canvas. And then uh, finally, revenue streams, okay? Revenue streams. And this is talking about how do you get paid, okay? For what value are your customers willing to pay? Sometimes or most times, it is not all that you bring into the marketplace that is paid for. So it's not all your features that uh, customers will pay for. Okay, but you, so you, it's very important that you identify what your customer is willing to pay for amongst everything that you are bringing into the marketplace. You need to know how money actually comes into your business. Okay, how do they recently pay? Or we can say, how do they pay? How are they paying? So apart from what they are wishing, apart from what they are willing to pay for, you also have to open a payment channel. How do they get to pay you? And how would they prefer to pay you? So are you thinking of uh, having a payment system whereby people don't really need to go out of, their, out of the comfort of their homes to pay you? So that means you need to think about payment integration into your uh, app or website, okay? Or do you prefer people to come to your office and fill a form and then pay you? Okay, so you need to think through all these things and flow with the times. Remember, a startup is a young business that is using technology to solve problems. Okay, so all these things, you need to uh, be very, very clear about them and put them in your business model canvas. So we are almost coming to the end of uh, my presentation. Like I said, it, it's going to uh, take between 40 to 50 minutes, and I hope I kept to time. And so let's quickly do a quick recap of the things we have learned today. I hope you can see my screen. The screen. And you are right on okay. time. <laughs> Thank you so much. So uh, this, is, this should be our take home for today. Final quick recap. And then uh, I'll also be glad to share a, a soft copy of a business model canvas with us so that we can get to work with them uh, immediately. So now, business model canvas. My is You're welcome. So a business model canvas is a strategic management tool to quickly and easily define and communicate a business idea or concept for developing new businesses and documenting existing ones. Take that home. It is a one-page document which works through the fundamental elements of a business or product, structuring an idea in a coherent way. And then finally, a business model canvas summarizes the nine key components of a business model in a single diagram. And these components are what we have just looked at today the value proposition, the customer segments, the channels, the customer relationships, key resources, key partners, key activities, the cost structure, and the revenue stream. With this, I say we have come to the end of uh, our presentation. I hope you have been able to uh, get value from uh, the things I've shared with you today. And uh, I would be happy to take a few questions. Okay. 
Wow, thank you, thank you so much, Mario, for walking us through that nine components of, of the business. Uh, if one can really take the time to walk through the business model, uh, like I said earlier, you have a clearer perspective of your business, you have a clearer understanding of what you even need to do to succeed in your business. And so we open the floor now to take questions. All right, so someone is uh, asking really, um, okay, does the BSC protect you against competitors? Or does, is it like when you have your business model and you're building your business, does it protect you against competitors? Wow, that's a very, very good question. Uh, a business model canvas does not protect you and actually in the marketplace you actually do not need to be thinking about protection from competitors because competitors will always be there okay the same way you are a competition to someone someone is also a competition to you but what it does is that it helps you to to put your your competition in perspective okay it makes you to understand that you have competitors out there to analyze them to know who they are okay and know how you are going to structure your product or your service in a way that is better than the competition okay so the competition is there but if you do your work very very well your business model can actually help you to outperform the competition wow Thank you, thank you, Mayo. So while, while the business model do not, does not really uh, protect you against competition, uh, because it's a business world, of course, everybody's in there for themselves. What it does is that it helps you own business into perspective um, in relation to what your uh, competitors are doing. Are you able to adjust your business um, um, in more practical ways that works better than what your competitors are doing? Thank you so much, Mayo. Uh, all right. So. Uh, thank you guys for really joining us. I can't really see any other question at the moment. Uh, okay. Let me just check a B. Okay. All right, so I, I can't really see any question at the moment. For those of you who are joining us, uh, I already said earlier, we have two sessions today. Uh, the first session is the workshop that we are just um, uh, we've just attended to right now. And thank you, Michael, for the amazing things you shared. Uh, from from the, the 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 nine components of of the business model canvas. Thank you so much. All right. So the next session now exactly. will be a, a networking session, uh, and in this networking session, um, it's going to be like an open mic interaction session. You have um, a, a, a business concern you really want to speak about. You want to you want startup mentors to um, help you bring perspective to your businesses. You are looking for a team member on your team or you are looking for work in a team, okay? So this is where we get to we get to do all of that. So in the next few minutes, uh, we'll be starting um, the, the networking session where we'll get to interact. And again, um, on the top um, center of your screen, you can see the various um, um, tabs there, the lobby, the agenda, the stage, and the networking. We have two networking rooms open, and the networking rooms will be open from now till 6.30, where we'll get to interact with each other. And then the, the uh, second session, can start. We have two rooms for the networking rooms. We have one room for um, founders and we have one room for startup mentors. So whatever it is that your your specific need is, you can actually interact together on the networking room for, for startups or the networking room for, for uh, startup mentors in case you have some business challenges. All right, so thank you. Thank you so much for, for, for being here uh, today. So we'll move over to the next session. Uh, thank you guys for joining. Uh, and let your questions keep coming in. Uh, uh, Mayoko is still with us. Uh, he's going to still be with us for, for quite some time, I think. Uh, Mayoko, won't you? Still very much available. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So, yeah, so let the questions keep coming in as we move to the networking sessions and networking rooms. <laughs> 